I'm about to cry, but I just really hope that in the future it will be different. Unfortunately, our people are not active just online, and I found myself in the position to sometimes to get the inspiration or talk about the Cynthia and Roma Holocaust and educate the future generation that they will be more like uh, basically active but it's very difficult it's very difficult because I think the, generally the new generation they are more active on the social media and it's very shameful I feel very ashamed but yeah I think we can start slowly. Michael, we're gonna have some speech. And Mr. Rishi, uh, few of us, any of you want to? Valdemar. 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 Sorry. Any, any of us want to? <laughs> <laughs> we also have a, and a thank you for solidarity from the Jewish community that they come and they turn on. Also, I would like to thank the travel movement who turned on today. And we would like to start, Mr. Rishi, you are the first. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we are gathered here today to uh, remember those uh, Roma Holocaust which uh, uh, Hitler killed not only Jews, he killed up, uh, so many Roma people as well. We are gathered here in front of the Holocaust Memorial which we have been coming here every year for the last about 8 to 10 years. And uh, we are very grateful that uh, we have uh, uh, from Jews uh, organization also, a rabbi also is here today. We, we are very grateful for their support for the, from the Jewish community for Roma Holocaust. And uh, we have a uh, uh, lot of things going around in Gypsy Council. Four of our members have gone to Auschwitz today. They have sent photographs from uh, uh, Krakow and then they are in Auschwitz. Uh, they have been to Krakow twice already, to Holocaust, Auschwitz twice before. So I didn't want to go there this time, but uh, I wish I could have gone with them because there were more Roma people there this time mm -hmm. than before. And uh, our Gypsy Council has got an uh, office up in uh, Maidstone, and uh, we are going to hope open a school there and uh, for Roma people and uh, anyone else who wants to come in. We'll have a full support from the council, from, uh, from Greenwich University and all those people, they'll be coming to support us. And uh, one of our Gypsy Council vice chairman is the one who donated the land and a lot of money to build up that uh, school for Roma people in Coxy. So one day we hope to uh, inaugurate that school and then we'd like uh, to invite you all to come to Coxy. And uh, you'll see that uh, Roma people are moving and education is very important for Roma people. And that's why we're going to educate Roma children and anyone else who wants to come in to join the Roma group. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Waldemar, uh, our uh, cultural uh, chairman. He'll be organizing a, a function in October and November in, in London where he'll be, we'll have uh, Roma dancers, Roma poets, and Roma gathering. In, uh, and uh, that will be sponsored by Gypsy Council. And thank you very much for coming. Please uh, contact us uh, before you go. So we like to have your name and email so that we can uh, keep you informed about the Roma movement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wally. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Thank you, everybody who has come. Roma, Jews, just people, English people, any people who have come to pay homage to this tragic event of the Jewish Holocaust Romani genocide. I'm Valdemar Kalinin. I'm Romani from Belarus. I was born after the war. And I greet you especially. Patevale Rayale Trumnale, dear ladies and gentlemen in Rome. I'm a Romani speaker, but I will speak in English. Let me continue uh, our solemn commemoration event to recollect the most tragic part of the Romani history, 
that happened in Europe, in Europe during 1938-1945, where the Nazi genocide against Jews, Gypsies, and especially, uh, uh, and especially in Eastern Europe, and other groups of our human society. Uh, the problem with gypsies started in 1924 in Nuremberg. There was established a central office for combating gypsies. And then, as you know, in 1926, there was the first <coughs> legislation for Roma or a order to be registered. And then it carried, carried, carried on. Until in 1938, there was a first roundup of Roma in Germany, which lasted until April 1945. So for seven years, this issue with Romani genocide varies to different extremes. I mean, Eastern Europe, I include Finland as well. Jews and Roma were not affected at all in Finland, although this country was the most loyal ally to the Nazi Germany during 1941-42. Its leader, Marshal Mannerheim, refused vigorously on the point of their collaboration with the Nazi mm -hmm. Germany with words to Katel, we have never persecuted anybody in our country. Jews are children of Finland. He, they didn't mention. Uh, Roma at all. So many Roma, by the way, many Roma, uh, Romani lads were in the Finnish army. On the other side, Finland's closest ethnic neighbor, Estonia, by the hands of the Estonian police and Liga, made it about 78% of the Romani population already in 1941. The rest of Eastern Europe collaboration temporal authorities treated gypsies in a different way after Hitler delivered his speech in Minsk, Belarus on 22nd, 28th of August 1941. Sedentary, sedentary or uh, established gypsies were classified as the rest of the population, while nomadic roaming gypsies should be separated and deported and deported to labor and concentration camps. Many Roma were called up to fight in the Red Army in Neville. Some went to Partisan, some volunteered to front, including women. There was one Romani woman fighter, Vera Dmitrienko. I'd like to show you, sorry, portrait. This was the only Romani fighter pilot, Vera Dmitrienka. She shot down two German bombers. After the war, she led a peaceful life. She was moved to the army, and this is she. You may ask me why I'm dressed up so. Today is also International Paratroopers Day, and I was a paratrooper. I did my national service and served as an officer a little bit, commander of the platoon for eight months, was discharged on medical grounds. I was a rubbish officer because I hadn't been trained as a cadet. But today is a day international solidarity. So all Roma should feel solidarity within any Roma in the world and should fight for each other, be loyal to death. This is, what's, this is a motto of uh, these special forces. Uh, I was born after the war, and I remember when there was shortage of food, and it was, uh, I was taken, I was woken up by my mom very early uh, to take up a queue for bread, sugar. But another disaster on the occupied, on the home occupied territory, because Belarus was devastated by 93%. Because the front between the Red Army and the Nazi Germany lasted for 10 months. 
they are bombarding each other. So, and this kind of, especially Belarus in some places was devastated by 97%. And the population loss was more than half. And many people went to partisans, so guerrillas, but some of them were just inverted comma guerrillas. And they uh, continued to act like partisans after the war in bands. They intimidated the local population until we walked up in the late 50s. There was called sometimes just in the war they were like uh, guerrillas, but they were no real guerrillas. They had got used to rob people, not to work. And it took some time until Jews started to return from Siberia and Roma who were mobbed and the life was more or less stable. My father was called up at the third call. He was already 48 years old. <coughs> and uh, mm -hmm. he was fortunate. He survived the battle and ended up his military, well, we can't call career, his military uh, activity in Germany and he returned with victory and medals. Unfortunately, my in-law families suffered, some of them suffered to death. They were murdered in a very notorious execution in Russia near Smolensk in 1942, allegedly for link with guerrillas. Not them, but they were murdered alongside 176 other victims. And but the Russian government erected a monument to these innocent victims in 1982. Let's pay attention to this map where gypsies were murdered in camps and on killing sites. We usually got used to, um, I haven't got a proper point or whatever. We all got used to places, thank you, to places like we all are aware, Auschwitz and Treblinka, but there were so many other places where we should pay homage to those people. And they just recently started, for example, Babi Yar near Kiev, where Jews were made, uh, sorry, gypsies were made alongside Jews. And until recently it came to the fact that about 47 Families were murdered. There were other notorious places. Some countries where didn't, uh, they were quite lenient, or they didn't uh, murder or didn't intimidate. This was Finland, as we say, Bulgaria, and Denmark. But some countries, they collaborated with the Nazis, especially the local punitive forces. And, for example, in Estonia, there is a monument there near Tallinn, there is a big monument to Kale Yarvi, where Roma, no, Roma were made it in the island, but there is a monument. Then there was a notorious quite few camps in Belarus. Why it didn't come to, to the knowledge of people? Because the Eastern Front here center lasted for nine months, and all these matters they made to blow up everything and to escape. There was no signs. Now they've restored this. Some other, then, Salzpils near Riga, Latvia, Kaunas in Lithuania, and then there were killing sites in Ukraine as well. There were numerous uh, camps in Poland, apart from all the Auschwitz, Lodz, Helmler, Belshev, etc. Oh, they should be as well. Uh, and then as well, the very notorious <coughs> concentration camp or extermination camp, Yesenovats, in Croatia, where the Croatian fascists killed innocent victims of Rome. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, let's bow down our hands and pay homage to innocent victims of the Nazi genocide against Jews 
and Roma by the minute of silence. And as Roma traditionally would say, light lokipulenge, a light resting place for them. And now traditionally, let's perform the Roman national anthem, Jalem Jalem. Fortunately, we've got the musicians. <laughs> you don't need to follow my terrible humming. And I will spread you some. What's the word? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mm. I can't oh, do so, yes, so please. Who are the best I represent uh, B'nai B'rith um, in the UK and I'm very honoured to be here and though our primary focus is on tackling anti-Semitism and defending Jewish interests, we recognise from the tragic arc of our own history that the hatred and the prejudice and the bigotry of <coughs> schools Jews does not end there and that is why it is part of our mission as well to stand for beleaguered minorities um, who have faced the same tragic persecution as Jews and that is why we're we're honoured to be, to be invited to come here to memorialise those who have suffered so tragically in the past. And I think also it's um, important to state that we must think about today as well, because while there are those who threaten uh, hatred, we must also sound the alarm to ensure that we can support those who are, support the Roma um, who are facing prejudice today. Maybe just one final thing, if I could say this, that one of the best answers to those who have wanted to wipe out a people in the past is to, today, be proud of, of 
your community and it seems to me that you are very proud of your community, you're proud of your traditions, you're vibrant, um, you are those who have lost their lives in the past as you should and you also seek to maintain your, your sense of yourself as a community which I think is very important and that, I'm pleased that that would, have, that would continue. I'm here to represent the Board of Deputies of uh, British Jews. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Um, I think the key word for me really here is solidarity. Uh, and it's a solidarity that we, we feel with you, uh, with you all, actually. Um, in the 1930s, an article in the Nazi Medical Journal said the following, rats, insects and fleas are part of nature just like gypsies and Jews. We must gradually eliminate these pests through biological means. This dehumanising language is one stage in the process of genocide, a process which ultimately ends up with mass murder but starts with words. And it's very important for us to pay very close attention um, to the words of extremists that start out Maybe they, they feel like, you know, well, if there's, a, there's an article here or there's a conversation in a restaurant, but we, we should never ignore it, we should never keep our mouths shut, we should always address it and we should always try and take action and act together. Um, and on behalf of the, the board, um, I wish you solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm Leah and we're Leah and Alex. Uh, we're from Rene Kassan, the Jewish Voice for Human Rights. Um, and for us, our raison d'etre and Rene Kassan exist uh, to use our Jewish experience and Jewish values to speak on behalf of other minorities living in the UK today that have suffered the same experiences that we have um, and the role that we have, like you said, in standing in solidarity. Um, along with the Jews, the Roman Gypsies were the only other ethnic minority targeted by the Nazis. Um, of the intent to eliminate the Romani community, one high-ranking Nazi official stated, in the same way as the National Socialist State has solved the Jewish question, it will also have to settle the Gypsy question one and for all. So throughout history we have been the victims of prejudice and hate, hate act, hate speech um, and it's only when we stand in solidarity that we come strong together. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, drafted by our namesake Monsieur René Kassan, was a response to the horrors of the Holocaust. At the time when intolerance and nationalism are on the rise, we must continue to stand in solidarity with Gypsy Roma travellers and other minority groups in the UK call out prejudice and hate when we see it. Maria um, Kassan runs a fellowship programme and we were in Budapest, we go every year to Budapest and we uh, meet with local communities and one of the communities we have a very close relationship with is the Roma community in Budapest and we always have a tour of what today is the Roma district but actually was the Jewish district and it's walking in the footsteps of our shared history and the experience of discrimination of the Roma community in Budapest but not only there, it's like he hearing the same story um, of what the Jewish community experienced 70, 80 years ago and we know where that ended um, in Europe in the 1940s and we just have to make sure that can never ever happen again to any community, uh, whether it's the Jewish community or the Roma community. Um, and just final words, as a Finnish Jew, um, I, I am here, my family is here um, because of maybe the questionable uh, motives of the Finnish government. It was actually fighting a common enemy. Um, but I stand here representing the Finnish, Jewish and Roma community. I just wanted to say a few words. My name is Rabbi Goldberg. I'm one of the founders of Rene Kassan. I, I want to thank you for allowing us to share this memorial. Um, I'm not a London Jew. I was brought up in Surrey uh, amidst uh, Roma, Sinti, traveller communities, 
Uh, we have five tribes actually in Surrey alone. And growing up in Surrey in the 1980s, there was improvement in terms of anti-discrimination. It no longer became acceptable to talk about black people or Asian people or Jews in terms of uh, racism and discrimination. But one group amongst the educated still stood out. The discrimination against Roma and traveler communities. And that discrimination meant that they were not given spaces to put their caravans, to put their sites. There were still pubs when I was growing up which said no Roma, no Sinti, when the signs had been torn down saying no blacks, no Jews, no Irish, no dogs. And I am ashamed. Over around 200,000, maybe more, Roman Sinti perished during the Holocaust. And I've been part of programs year on year saying we should learn from the genocide of the Jews and the Romans, say never again. And then we point to Rwanda, and we point to Cambodia, we point to Bosnia. But we do not point to the treatment today in this country, in this place, of Roma, Gypsy and traveller communities who continue to be discriminated against, who continue to be moved on, who continue to be denied education, who continue to be denied a place in our society. And why? Why do those educated people I grew up with, many who went to our top university, say, because the Roma and Gypsy communities dare to live a different lifestyle. Well, look at the laws of Nuremberg. Why were the Jews and the Roma and the Sinti declared enemies of the state? It's because we decided to be different. Maybe have a different religious lifestyle like the Jews. A different way of living like the Roma and Sinti. I've worked with uh, French Holocaust charities that do record the Roman Sinti charity. I've worked with Hans Zimmer, who is a Jewish German composer, yeah. who happens upon Roma music. Yeah. Why? Because he was filming Sherlock Holmes. And he said, that will make a nice scene. I'll do a nice scene. We'll get Hans, well, the director said, we'll get Hans to come along. We'll play around with some Roma and Sinti music. Now, Hans Zimmer fell in love with your music and your culture and your people, and it's worth preserving. It's worth preserving like my culture, my people, my history, and my music. So I'll finish with this. I don't just want to be your brothers in death, and we shall be ever linked through the Holocaust, but I want to be your brothers in life. I want to see a proper Roma memorial here in London, and not just in Berlin. I want to see proper Roma rights here in London, and not just across Europe, whether it be Hungary, or Romania, or other parts of Europe which discriminate more heavily against Roman Sinti. I'm not proud that they discriminate less here. I want them to discriminate not at all. I want to be equal and I want equality for the Roman Sinti. And that's why I join you here today. May, may Heavenly Father remember all your victims of the Holocaust and all my victims of the Holocaust. And may we go on and live together in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A message from Kate Green MP, who's um, a member of the All Par Parliamentary Party Group on Anti Gypsyism, who apologises she can't be here today but has sent a message and asked us to read it on her behalf. I'm sorry not to be with you to mark this terrible anniversary in human history and to remember the hundreds of thousands of Roma murdered in the, in the Holocaust. I honour their memory and salute the solidarity between Jews and Gypsies, Roma and travellers. Today, Roma is our country, and across Europe, continue to suffer Roma in our country, and across Europe, continue to suffer discrimination, abuse, and disadvantage. Today, on this 75th anniversary, as we remember those who lost their lives in the Holocaust, let us pledge to end the discrimination they continue to experience. Sorry, excuse me, please. Michael, maybe.
Thank you, Robert Goldberg, for your words. Robert Goldberg, we have two stereotypes. Uh, yes, as far as, uh, buy one, get get one free. He's both Jewish and Irish. Yes. <laughs> so, so he knows what discrimination is all about. I've been coming here for many years, and it's a pity that we don't see more people. Uh, here commemorating one of the greatest crimes against humanity that took place on European soil. Because six million Jews were murdered, it doesn't diminish in any way the suffering of the Roma and the Sinti. Hundreds of thousands of these people, these people who'd lived in Europe for 1,500, 2,000 years. And the connection between our peoples was even noticed by a very famous English writer, George Eliot, Mary Ann Evans, that she wrote one book called Daniel de Ronda, about the Jews and then she wrote another book called The Spanish Gypsy about a state for the Roma people and it's very interesting that in the book she intertwines the Jewish history and the Roma history in Spain how one affects the other At Jewish weddings, we play gypsy music. Whenever I go in the street and I hear Basque playing gypsy music, it reminds me of a wedding. I, I, my feet start tingling and start tapping. We play also Havana Gila <laughs> at, the Jew, at the gypsy weddings. Because Jews and gypsies do not just share our negative experience of discrimination. We also celebrate life. We feel the importance of life. On one hand, Jews, also, Jews like travelers, like gypsies, are always sitting on our suitcases. I once heard from my MP, Diane Abbott, that as a young woman, she was once invited to an event with Lord Rothschild and she thought to herself, what does she have in common with Lord Rothschild? And Lord Rothschild said to her that we are both sitting on our suitcases, that all minorities have the fear that any day we might be forced to leave the country of our residents. So there's always this movement, there's always this feeling that we might have to move. Gypsies are always moving and Jews always feel that we are, that we might be about to move. Something might happen that might force us to go from one country to the next, from one city to the next, as we've seen countless times in our history. As Jews, we are now commemorating the three weeks of remembering, of marking our exile. Exile is, means that a person doesn't feel that we are in our natural place. It doesn't, it's not about space per se, it's about conceptual space. It's about feeling that this is who we are and where we belong. I think gypsy culture is about looking who we are, where we are, and where we belong because of the tremendous millennia of hatred and discrimination and marginalization of the Roma Sinti gypsy people. 
I think today is a very appropriate time that all of us here should think to ourselves what am I doing to help the Gypsy people, the Roma people, the Sinti people who are suffering terribly in Europe. I've seen in Bruno in the Czech Republic Roma who were minding their own business waiting for a train, how the police came and forcibly made them move, move away for the only sin, because they were Sinti. And as a child of survivors of the Holocaust, it aroused in me the visions of what Jews suffered 70, 80 years ago. Suffering isn't just about the murder of six million. It's about any persecution, however small it might seem. It might seem to us as small, but to the one, but to the victim, it's not small at all. It's tremendously traumatic. The, there's an Indian, a Native American <laughs> saying that trauma lasts for seven generations. And this has a very strong corollary in Jewish thinking that trauma isn't just something that happens to the person, it's something that is handed down in an and therefore we need to factor that in, in our understanding of both people. And especially we Jews need to have a deeper and more profound understanding of the gypsy experience because it is so similar to our own. Let us hope that the future, in the future we will work together, we will empathize, we will work for each other for a better future for all people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so I would like to say thank you for all of you who come here today and gather here and come to the high Park. And um, I would like to just say a few words regarding this because maybe some of you, you know me, some of you maybe you don't. <laughs> My name is Daniela Abraham. Uh, I'm originally from Slovakia. I'm a Ungripromni and Hungarian Roma mix. <laughs> so basically, I would like to talk about also my uh, Sinti Roma Holocaust Memorial Trust uh, non profit organization and also something about the past. Uh, so the, the Holocaust was catastrophe for Europe's Roma and Sinti people as it was for the Jewish people. The number of the Roma and Sinti victims is unknown because the Nazi regime considered us to be unworthy to even have our deaths recorded and science a great many Roma and Sinti were still nomadic at the time. The majority of the murders were conducted to wherever Roma Sinti were found by the Einsatzgruppen. These unrecorded deaths outnumbering even the terrible toll of the concentration camps. The German government and the European Union recognize only 500,000 Roma deaths in the Samudaita. However, the uh, Rion at the uh, Weistall Center stated that based on their Nazi work and the records is up to 2.5 million Roma Sinti were murdered. Adding the fact that the great number of the victims were murdered outside of the camps and based on the best estimate of Europe and Roma Sinti population before and after the Nazi era. Furthermore, the Sinti and Roma victims, the families, never received proper reparations for their losses. Indeed, until the recently as the, in 1982, the West German government, uh, it was then, denied and the genocide of the Roma Sinti has taken a place insisting that basically the Roma Sinti victims were common criminals and they got what they deserved. Finally, the genocide was acknowledged in 2012 
uh, a small monument was constructed in uh, Tiergarten in Berlin. Never has adequate recognition given to the fact that the magnitude of the Samudari fell. There now is between 200,000 and 300,000 Cynthia and Roma immigrants and their families live in the UK and com contributing to the economy, often working hard in many of jobs that others are required to do. And of course, they are det determined to, to make a better life for their families and for their children. In view of this, we feel that it's a matter of natural justice that we should have commensurate representation on the Holocaust-related bodies and projects in order both properly commemorate our family members who were murdered or who suffered torture during the Holocaust and yes and we want to educate the public about this much more overlooked chapter in the life in the history it has been now proposed to invite people from groups who were not in any way affected by Samudari Pen to become the representatives of the Sinti and Roma to the Holocaust. People who were not affected in any way by the Samudari Pen who do not belong to the Sinti and Roma tribes and who do not even speak the Romani language therefore cannot communicate effectively with the people who are actually need to be represented. It has been proposed that two non-Roma white European, non-Sinti and non-Roma authors who made their money and academic reputations by writing histories of the Roma should be our representatives. We, the Sinti and Roma, considered this as an easel of a similar level to the white Americans writing histories of the slavery, emancipation and civil rights battles of the black Americans and claiming that they can represent and claiming as they are can represent or for their rights. I think it's totally unacceptable. As we say in Romani, what is done in the name of the Roma and without a Roma is against the Roma. The Sinti Roma Holocaust Memorial Trust is generally a Roma-led UK-based non-profit organization created to campaign for the proper commemoration for the Samudari Pen and educate the general public about the Samudari Pen. I know many people, many Rom men especially, they're not happy to see me here today. And the reason why? Because I'm a Romani, Romani woman. They doesn't want to see women, a Sinti Roma woman, to say these words. They told me I have no right to speak behalf of my nation. I have no right to speak behalf of Sinti and Roma because you are women. You're supposed to stay at home clean and cook. But I just have one message for you guys, if you see even this live video, that I'm determined to represent my nation. And I love my Sinti Romani nation. And I will fight for our rights. And always I will highlight the issues, the corruption, the discrimination, in between our communities, especially with the women. It's 21st century, we have our rights, the women have also our rights. And I believe that many of Romani women or Sinti women in my position, they will say the same words. Just because of the gender, we are not less. We are equal.
few years back, when I came here with the Gypsy Council before and with the other Roma and Sinti, I just give my personal testimony from my family who have been murdered during the Samodari pen. And I'm thinking, what changed? Why I'm coming here every year to commemorate if I don't see anyone from our community? It's just few people and I feel ashamed and I feel angry. But everything by our community is just online. I call them the keyboard warriors. We need proper men, proper Sinti and Roma men and women, of course. who think the same way I, I, <laughs> as I do. Because I want a better life for my children, for the future generation. And sometimes I'm afraid because we see the political power is changing, the political environment is very, it's not very hostile regarding the Roma and Sinti, nowhere. They doesn't like us. First time when I Actually, I made this page, just it was a Facebook page, the first day on the Sinti Roma Hoka's Memorial Trust page. I found so much negativity. The first day I received messages, it was not one, two, it was a couple of hundreds saying that, I don't want to say <laughs> bad words, but they was very horrible. One of them, it very, really, touch my heart and I was thinking of that message saying to me it was an anonymous person telling me you dirty gypsy B go back to your country and I just want to say you know I'm a Roma I'm a Sinti and Roma I'm at home everywhere you cannot send me nowhere unfortunately God gave us the land and we are free to live where we want to. We don't have a state like Israel. They have their own, the Jewish people, they have their own state. Thanks God. They have their own president. Thanks God. But we don't have the Romani people we don't have. But it's our right to live where we want to live because we want a good education for our children that we have a better life and they wouldn't face discrimination like in Eastern Europe I just want to say a few words uh, regarding one family who lives in uh, Slovakia they contacted me just a couple of months ago and this family lives in East Slovakia and their daughter, her name is Lucia. Like the Jewish people, the Roma people, we are religious too. We are going to church. And this little girl wanted to have her first, how do you say that in English? Communion. 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 Yes. And what happened? That the people, in the church, they verbally kind of not contacted, but verbally <laughs> let know. know the priest that they doesn't want this little girl to be sitting in between their children. So they want this little girl Lucia from Slovakia for her first communion to sit behind with her family to be segregated from the white children. Because they think the children, even they are dark-skinned Roma, they cannot be with the white children together in the church. This lady, her name is Maika Gajdušová, the mom of Rutia. She was crying. She was desperate. She started to call the friends the Roma friends and the Sinti who are actually more active that if we can help her with the justice because she felt this is not the place 
that you're supposed to show or discriminate someone. The church is the last thing. The synagogue is the last thing. The mosque is the last thing where you want to meet the racism. God is not racist. God is love. And God loves the Cynthia and Roma and loves the Jewish and love any color of any people just us the humans we are making division and hate hatred in between each other and I want to say thank you from deep of my heart for those Jewish people and those people who come here today and pay the respect for for the Sinti and Roma victims thank you so much uh, dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends, first I would like to thank you all that you have came today to commemorate as every year we are coming, gathering together to commemorate the Nazi crimes committed on us. On Roma and Jews. My speech was my controversial speech was prepared and I have it on my mobile phone but while I was driving down from Derby to London by my car my battery is run out so I have to somehow take it from my head. <laughs>